Paul, it's been 10 years since he's won any major. We're talking about Rory McIlroy. So what do you think the issue is? Mm. Well, I mean, let's preface everything we're going to say here by, by the fact that this guy knows how to win. Yeah. You know, with a 10% win ratio on tour, you know, by far he is the best winning ratio of anybody of his generation since Tiger Woods. So let's make that clear. We, we know that. The hurdle is getting over the lines in these major championships, and particularly here at Augusta National as he tries to uh, complete what is a, a Grand Slam that only five players in the history of the game have done. So obviously it's a mental challenge more than anything else. Um, and it goes back to the point we made at the top of the show and, you know, our chats with Yvonne Lendl. I spoke to Laura Davies about it as well today, you, you know, her supreme uh, career. And what, what, what kind of pressure do you feel coming into major championships was the question I asked them. And how did you deal with it? Um, you know, and, and they had very similar um, uh, answers. And, and the answers revolved around reframing in your own mind and the mindset. And... What I've noticed about great sports people, not just Tiger Woods, but people in other sports as well too, they create their own reality and they believe their own reality. That's why Tiger can stand up at a press conference today with full belief and think I'm here to win. Hmm. He creates in his own mind that. Now, whether it's the evidence is all against that, that's irrelevant. The point is what's going on in there. And, and I think that's the secret with Rory and, and a reframing to get a mindset. You know, I talk so often, I'm going to say it again about the pointy elbows. You know, Rory, when people say he backdoored the top three or he backdoored the top ten, but the reason is he's in the right mindset to backdoor it. So he wants to get in that mindset earlier so he doesn't get out of the tournament before he yeah, but then leaves no the pressure and goes. There's no pressure when you're nine behind. You exactly, and that's before. the point about it is to come out of the blocks with a reframing with that kind of mindset, cultivating that mindset that you have uh, and that he does when he's chasing. I always believe Rory is best when he's chasing. When he's, get out of my way, here I come. So you think if he's going to get it done this week, what, better that he's, what, three, four behind going I, to Sunday? I mean, he, he was... Three behind, as I mentioned in 2018, didn't play particularly well. Yeah, he didn't, and I think he would have learned from that. And I, I think that opportunity coming again his way could really see him get over the line. I really do think that, no, I'm not saying that he shouldn't go out to try to lead after Obviously, three rounds, yeah. far from it. Um, but it's interesting to hear him talking so much about strategy. You know, we never really hear Rory McIlroy talk a lot about strategy. Something has got in his head. Maybe he's been watching Scotty Scheffler and, you know, your analysis and breakdown and our, uh, of his course management and how he manages his way around and how he makes less bogeys than anybody else. And that's the base of his success uh, over the last 18 months and it looks like he's maybe following that pattern of maybe not being so gung-ho yes I have a six gear but I'm not going to use a six gear I'm going to stay in gears four and five I'm going to get myself into contention you know and then you know let let look take a chance uh, it's it's about being in contention as often as you can and let look take a chance I think it's a matter of time before he does win a major and unlocks the key and when he wins one I expect him to win two or three in quick succession again uh, because that will be a big mental release for him when he does so.